starting off our list today, we are talking about the House of Plantagenet. This was like a real life version of Game of Thrones, ruling over England from the mid 12th to the late 15th centuries. These guys were at the center of the Wars of the Roses, a messy, bloody series of civil wars that were basically one giant family feud over who got to wear the crown. The family split into two main factions, the Yorks and the Lancasters. Think of them as the ultimate sibling rivalry, but instead of fighting over who gets the remote, they battled it out for the English throne. This internal family drama wasn't just a couple of minor skirmishes, it was a full-on warfare that threw England into chaos for decades. Castles were besieged, armies marched across the country, and battles left fields soaked in blood. Kings were made and unmade in battles like those at St. Albans, Toton, the bloodiest day in English history, and Bosworth, where Richard III famously lost his crown and his life to Henry Tudor, ending the Plantagenet rule and starting the Tudor dynasty. But the family were were more than just their civil wars. They were a complicated bunch with a knack for political maneuvering, backstabbing, and dramatic public displays. They built some of England's most famous castles and were responsible for significant legal reforms. But let's be honest, they're mainly remembered for their spectacular fallouts and the way they turned sibling rivalry into a national sport. Their legacy is a story of power, betrayal, and the high cost of the throne, painting a vivid picture of medieval monarchy in all of its brutal glory. Next we are talking about the Tervardieva family. In Stavropol, Russia, there was a family that turned their lives into a real life horror movie. Meet the Tervardieva family, led by Anessa and her husband Roman, along with their daughters Victoria and Anastasia. This family wasn't just your average family next door. Over six years, starting as early as 2007, they embarked on a terrifying crime crime spree across the region. Anessa, a former nursery school teacher, and Roman, a dentist, led their family into a very dark world of crime, robbing, and eliminating anyone who got in their way. The family's method was chilling. They used camping trips as a cover to scout for their next victims, ranging from police officers to innocent travelers. Their most notorious crime was the brutal attack on the Chudikov family, where they mercilessly ended the lives of the family, taking trivial items while leaving more valuable assets untouched. This family of serial killers showcased a bizarre mix of domestic life and ruthless criminal activity, making them one of the most disturbing families in recent history. Their reign of terror ended in 2013 when they were finally captured, revealing a cache of weapons and stolen goods. Next we are talking about the Kelly family. Back in 1887, the Kelly family ran a seemingly innocent inn in Kansas, a place that promised rest for cattle ranchers and travelers trekking across the dusty plains. Led by William Kelly, Kelly, along with his wife Kate, their son Bill, and daughter Kit, this family wasn't just serving up hospitality. They had a very sinister side that turned their homely inn into a deadly trap. The Kellys had a gruesome setup, a chair positioned over a trap door at their dining table. Unsuspecting guests who sat there would plummet through the floor, often to their deaths. If the fall didn't do the trick, members of the Kelly family would descend into the darkness to finish finish the job. But like all dark secrets, this one didn't stay hidden forever. After several travelers failed to reach their destinations, whispers and suspicions grew. When the Kelly family suddenly fled towards Mexico, the local authorities inspected the inn. What they found was the stuff of nightmares. Numerous bodies hidden beneath the house, in the stable, and near the barn, revealing the true horror of what went on at the inn. Legend has it that a furious posse caught up with the Kellys, and in a swift, brutal act of frontier justice, the family finally met their end. Next, we are talking about the Staffelback family. In the rugged and wild heartland of Kansas, there once lurked a family that could give any horror movie a run for its money. Led by the matriarch Nancy Staffelbeck, this family wasn't just running a brothel, they were running a death trap. The nightmare is believed to have started when her sons, Ed and Mike, lost control and in a violent 
violent fit of rage, took the lives of two women who were living at their brothel. But they didn't stop there. The Staffelbacks turned their establishment into a macabre business, robbing and taking the lives of many of the unsuspecting souls who wandered in looking for some company. While the law only managed to pin one crime against a minor whose body was unceremoniously dumped in a mine shaft on the family, whispers and rumors suggested that the Staffelbacks might have been responsible for up to 50 deaths. The true extent of their gruesome spree remains buried in history, but the chilling legacy of Nancy and her sons serve as a dark reminder of the evil that can fester behind closed doors, turning a simple house into a den of death and despair. Next we are talking about the Murdoch family. A long-standing pillar of South Carolina's legal scene, this family turned from being revered into reviled as their saga unfolded like a southern gothic tale dripping with scandal and tragedy. Starting in the 18th century, the Murdochs were a force in the Low Country, dominating the judiciary for nearly a century. Three generations of Randolph Murdoch's consecutively held the post of circuit solicitor from 1920 to 2006, earning the five-county area the name Murdoch Country. Yeah. The family's law firm, founded in 1910 by Randolph Murdoch Sr., thrived on personal injury litigation. However, beneath the surface of legal triumphs lay a murky world of crime and corruption. Richard Alex Murdoch, along with various family members, became embroiled in a web of killing, fraud, theft, and witness intimidation. The turning point came in 2019 when Alex's son Paul was charged with felony counts related to a fatal boating accident, sparking allegations of preferential treatment. The dark underbelly of the Murdoch dynasty was fully exposed in June 2021 when Alex's wife Maggie and son Paul were found with their lives taken at their estate. Alex was later charged with the crime and in 2023 he was found guilty, receiving two consecutive life sentences without parole. This high profile case, covered extensively by media including an entire Netflix series, peeled back layers of a family that welded enormous power only only to be undone by their own grievous misdeeds. From legal luminaries to convicted felons, the Murdoch's story is a dramatic fall from grace, marked by a tragic blend of power, deception, and violence that turned Murdoch country into a land of infamy. Next we are talking about Gerald and Charlene Gallego. Between 1978 and 1980, Sacramento, California was the hunting ground for a notorious couple who embarked on a terrifying crime spree leaving a trail of horror behind them. Gerald and Charlene were a deadly duo who kidnapped women, turning them into their captives and subjecting them to unspeakable horrors before brutally ending their lives. In total, they claimed 10 innocent lives. Their reign of terror came to an abrupt end after a particularly bold kidnapping of Craig Miller and Mary Elizabeth Sowers, witnessed by the victim's friend who quickly noted the van's license plate. Despite this, the evil couple managed to take the lives of Craig and Mary before the police could catch up. Gerald was sentenced to death in both California and Nevada, symbolizing the gravity of his crimes, while Charlene, turned informant, received a comparatively lenient 16-year sentence walking free in 1997. Gerald's life ended in prison due to rectal cancer in 2002, but the dark shadow of their deeds lingers in the memory of Sacramento to this day. Next, we are talking about David Allen Gore and Fred Waterfield. In the early 1980s, this duo, known as the Killing Cousins, unleashed a horrifying spree of violence against women. These two cousins were not just family, they were partners in a chilling series of gruesome crimes. They attacked their victims, dismembering their bodies and hiding them in unmarked graves. Gore, the more outspoken of the two, was found guilty of taking the lives of six women and definitely did didn't hesitate to drag Waterfield into the nightmare, claiming he was involved in every attack. Despite this, Waterfield played the innocence card, bizarrely claiming that he was just a hostage in the whole situation. But the evidence, of course, stacked up against him, and while Gore faced execution in 2013, 30 years after their brutal crimes, Waterfield ended up with a life sentence.
sentence behind bars. Next, we are talking about Kenneth Bianchi and Angelo Bueno Jr. Known as the Hillside Stranglers, these cousins were a chilling example of family ties turned toxic. These two turned the hills of Los Angeles into a nightmare landscape between 1977 and 1978, where they went on a crime spree that ended in taking the lives of 10 young women. What's particularly twisted is how they operated under the guise of police officers to lure their victims, showing a creepy level of cunning and manipulation. Their crimes, which originally threw investigators off by making them think a single person was behind them, revealed the dark potential of what can happen when family bonds are combined with a shared psychopathic streak. After their spree, the gruesome discoveries of the victims' bodies on the hillside sent shockwaves through the city, marking them as one of the most notorious pairs in American crime history. Bianchi tried to play the insanity card, but eventually both he and Buono were caught and convicted, proving that even the closest of family can't escape the long arm of the law when they spiral into such deep evil. Next, we are talking about the Fox sisters. These were three siblings from Rochester, New York, who sparked the entire spiritualism movement in the 19th century. Initially, young sisters Kate and Margaret Fox fooled people into believing that they could communicate with spirits using mysterious wrappings. Their older sister Leah saw an opportunity and managed their careers, turning them into famous mediums. For years, they convinced many that they were channeling the dead, influencing a wave of spiritual belief across America. However, the spooky tale took a twist in 1888 when Margaret publicly admitted that it was all a hoax. She showed that the eerie sounds were actually made by just cracking their toe joints. Despite their confession, the fascination with spiritualism didn't die down. It actually continued to grow, showing just how eager people were to believe in the possibility of contacting the afterlife. The story of the Fox sisters is a fascinating mix of deceit, fame, and the human desire to find meaning beyond this world wrapped up in a legacy that is still debated today. Their journey from small town tricksters to founders of a major movement shows just how powerful and persuasive a well-spun tale can be, especially when it flirts a little with the unknown. And finally on our list today we are talking about the Wildenstein family. Renowned as powerhouse art dealers, the Wildensteins have been at the center of the art world for generations, known for their eye for priceless works and their knack for acquiring them. But it's not just all classy galleries and to elegant auctions, this family has found themselves repeatedly in the hot seat for some pretty dodgy behavior. Accusations of fraud, theft, and massive tax evasion have clung to them like paint on a palette. They're like the art world's version of a heist movie, but instead of robbing banks, they're allegedly dodging taxes and swindling heirs out of their rightful inheritances. Their private lives are just as colorful and controversial. There's been messy public divorces that could rival any soap opera, with family members squabbling over their vast fortune. In one particularly juicy episode, a member of the family apparently tried to hide hundreds of millions of dollars worth of art from his estranged wife, leading to a scandal that had everyone from Paris to New York whispering over their champagne glasses. It's like they took the phrase family drama and decided to crank it up to an 11. With the Wildensteins, it's not just about selling art, it's about mastering the art of scandal. Starting off today, we are talking about the harp brothers. Micah Big Harp and Wiley Little Harp were notorious outlaws who roamed the American frontier in the late 18th century, earning the grim title of America's first documented serial killers. These brothers were a brutal duo who left a bloody trail across Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois, claiming the lives of at least 39 people. Their crimes weren't just about the body count, they took a very dark pleasure in the cruelty of their methods, often harming their victims in ways that sent shockwaves of horror through the communities they terrorized. Beyond their savage crimes, the Harps were also known for their thievery and for setting fires to cover their tracks or create diversions. Their reign of terror came to a gruesome end when they were finally captured, but their tales of brutality lived on, painting them as a sort of boogeyman of the early American wilderness. Next, we are talking about the Gonzalez sisters, Delfina and Maria were infamous figures in Mexico during the 1950s and 
activities, not just for running a large sex work ring, but for the terrifying manner in which they managed their illicit business. These sisters turned their ranch into a nightmarish hub of criminal activity, where they lured countless young women with promises of legitimate jobs, only to force them into a life of darkness and crime. The depths of their cruelty didn't stop there. The sisters were notoriously brutal, punishing and sometimes killing the women over minor infractions or when they became too ill or too old to work. They also didn't hesitate to eliminate any clients who crossed them or knew too much, but by the time the authorities caught up with them, it was revealed that their reign of terror resulted in the deaths of at least 91 people. Next we are moving on to the Shelton Brothers gang. Led by the notorious trio of Carl, Earl, and Bernie Shelton, they were a force to be reckoned with in southern Illinois during the Prohibition era. These brothers turned bootlegging into an art form, running illegal alcohol with a mix of charm and brute force. They didn't just stop at smuggling hooch, they expanded their empire into gambling and weren't shy about knocking out the competition, literally. Their battles with rival gangs were like the stuff of legend, featuring high octane shootouts and dramatic bombings, but the Sheltons were also very savvy political operators. They knew that a little influence could go a long way, so they cozied up to local politicians to shield their operations from the law. Whether it was bribing officials or intimidating enemies, they had a hand in shaping the political landscape to suit their needs. Their blend of criminal cunning and entrepreneurial spirit made them a powerhouse during one of America's most tumultuous times, and their legacy is a wild chapter in the history of the American Midwest's underworld. Next, we are talking about the DeMio crew, an infamous arm of the Gambino Mafia family. They were the epitome of ruthless efficiency in New York City's underworld during the 1970s and the 1980s. Led by the notorious Roy DeMio, this gang was feared for their brutal tactics and cold-blooded efficiency. They weren't just your average mobsters. These guys turned crime into a gruesome art form, specializing in a method they dubbed the Gemini Method which involved taking the lives of their victims, then systematically dismembering them to dispose of the bodies more effectively. Unsettling. It's believed they were responsible for up to a hundred of these gruesome crimes, leaving a trail of terror across the city. Their operations weren't limited to eliminating rivals or unfortunate snitches, they dipped their bloody hands into various mafia enterprises, from car theft rings known as the car theft capital of the world, to substance trafficking and loan sharking. Next we are talking about the Sackler family, owners of Purdue Pharma. They are often seen as the face of the opioid crisis that has ravaged communities across the United States. They made their fortune from Oxycontin, a powerful painkiller that became a blockbuster drug thanks to aggressive marketing and sales tactics. Despite its effectiveness for pain relief, Oxycontin also became infamous for its addictive qualities, a fact that many accuse the Sacklers of deliberately downplaying to boost sales. As the death toll from opioid overdoses soared into the hundreds of thousands, the family found themselves in hot water, facing a barrage of lawsuits from states, cities, and individuals claiming Purdue Pharma's practices contributed significantly to the epidemic. The Sackler's saga is a very complex mix of medical innovation, corporate greed, and a public health disaster, leaving a legacy mired in controversy and a nation grappling with the consequences of addiction. Next we are talking about the Duvalier family. Led first by Francois Papadoc and then led by his son Jean-Claude Baby Doc. They dominated Haiti from 1957 to 1986 and their reign was nothing short of a horror movie come to life. Papadoc, a former doctor turned dictator, used his private militia the Tonton Makut as a tool of terror. These guys were aptly named after a boogeyman from Haitian folklore, but their horror was unfortunately very real. They enforced Papa Doc's rule through torment, kidnappings, and the disappearance of anyone who whispered a word of dissent. When Papa Doc passed away, his son Baby Doc took over and the nightmare continued. Under their rule, Haiti was stripped of its wealth, with the Duvaliers living large while the country plunged into poverty and chaos. Their legacy? A lasting shadow of fear and corruption that still darkens Haitian politics. It's a stark reminder of how absolute power can corrupt absolutely, leaving a nation to collect the
the pieces long after they were gone. Next we are talking about the Rajneesh family or the followers of Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh who later rebranded himself as Osho. They were more like a tight knit cult than a traditional family. In the early 1980s this group set up a commune called Rajneesh Puram in the wilds of Oregon creating a mini city complete with its own airport, malls and police force. Their goal? To live out the spiritual leader's vision of a utopian society. However, of course, things took a dark turn when they attempted to take over the local government in Wasco County. Under the directive of Ma Anad Sheila, Osho's fiery personal secretary, the Rajneeshis hatched a plan to win a county election by incapacitating the local voter base. In a shocking move, they spread salmonella bacteria on salad bars in 10 local restaurants, sickening over 750 people in one of the largest bioterror attacks in US history. But their scheming didn't stop at biological warfare, I guess that just wasn't enough. They were also caught engaging in a slew of other illegal activities, including immigration fraud, wiretapping, and even plotting assassinations to silence their critics. Next we are talking about the Moran family. They were central figures in the gritty and blood soaked drama of Melbourne's gangland wars, a series of brutal conflicts that rocked Australia's underworld in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Led by the tough as nails patriarch Louis Moran and his sons Mark and Jason, this family was deeply entrenched in the drug trade, living a life that mixed the glamour of big money with the grim reality of urban warfare. Their world was one where loyalty was under constant test and where any moment could erupt into violence, often leading to gruesome crimes as a tool for solving disputes and silencing rivals. The Moran's saga of crime and retribution didn't just make headlines, it actually inspired the hit TV series Underbelly, which really pulled back the curtain on their lives with a mix of true events and also a little dramatic flair. This show gave viewers a front row seat to the high stakes and fatal twists of Melvin's criminal depths, portraying the Morans not just as cold-hearted gangsters, but as complex characters navigating a deadly game. Their story is a chilling reminder of how deeply crime can run in a family and how it can spiral out into a community, leaving a legacy of fear and fascination in its wake. Next we are talking about the Gucci family. While not criminally evil in like the traditional sense, like maybe some of the others we've spoken about today, the Gucci family's saga reads like a script from a dramatic, high fashion thriller complete with betrayal, opulence, and a dash of cold blooded crime. This illustrious Italian family known worldwide for their luxury fashion brand has found themselves in the headlines for far more sinister reasons. Maurizio Gucci, the charming but embattled grandson of the founder Guccio Gucci, met a tragic end in 1995 when he was gunned down in Milan. The mastermind behind his killing was none other than his glamorous ex-wife Patrizia Reggiani who was dubbed the Black Widow by the press. She hired a hitman to kill Maurizio after their divorce, reportedly unhappy with his handling of the family fortune and his plans to marry another woman. This shocking act was the culmination of years of family infighting and luxury living gone awry, where the quest for control and the Gucci empire led to a series of disputes, legal battles, and financial missteps. As the Gucci family's dirty laundry aired in public, the world watched a real life drama that overshadowed the brand's glossy image, showing that even in the world of high fashion, the price of greed and heartbreak can definitely be deadly. And finally on our list today we are talking about the House of Habsburg. This was like the ultimate European royal powerhouse ruling over the Holy Roman Empire, Spain and Austria for hundreds of years. They were super influential but they had a very strange way of keeping power within the family. They just married their own cousins. Lots of intermarriage to keep the dynasty pure but this led to some very serious problems. The most notorious was the Habsburg jaw. A jutting jawline that was so pronounced in some family members that they had trouble speaking and eating. The most extreme case was Charles II of Spain, a guy whose health and mental abilities were so affected by these genetic issues that his reign is often cited as a major factor in the decline
decline of the Spanish Empire. He was known as the Bewitched because of his various ailments and how they affected his rule. The poor guy's health was a total mess, and since he couldn't produce an heir, his death marked the end of the Habsburg line in Spain. This whole entire saga shows how the Habsburg's obsession with keeping it in the family led to their downfall, turning them into a textbook example of why genetic diversity matters, especially if you're running an empire. Starting off this list, we are talking about the Lafferty brothers. Ron and Dan were not just your typical criminals, part of a radical polygamist group that broke away from the mainstream Mormon church. These brothers turned their religious beliefs into a nightmare. In 1984, they shockingly claimed that God had told them to commit horrifying crimes. Their victims? Couple members of their own family. The brutality of the crimes involving a weapon and a very personal attack absolutely rocked the nation, especially because the brothers showed no remorse, believing that they were carrying out a divine command. This very chilling story is a stark reminder of how dangerously twisted the path of fantasism can definitely become. Next we are talking about the Ripper Crew, often remembered as one of Chicago's most horrifying gangs in the early 1980s, this was not just an average group of criminals. They were led by the disturbingly charismatic Robin Gecht. This quartet of men transformed their twisted fantasies into a very gruesome reality. Their crimes weren't just shocking for the sheer brutality of them, they involved some horrific details that ended in the deaths of at least 18 women. But of course, it didn't stop there. The Ripper crew elevated their wickedness to another level with human consumption and very bizarre ritualistic practices, including amputations performed to satisfy Gek's grotesque obsessions. Their rituals, believed to involve eating parts of their victims as a way to gain power, still send shivers down the spine of those who remember the case. Just horrific. There's really no other word for it other than just absolutely horrific. Next up, we are talking about the past. Pappin sisters. The Pappin sisters, Christine and Leah, were the centerpiece of one of France's most chilling cases. Back in 1933, these two seemingly quiet live in maids snapped in a spectacularly horrific way. They brutally took the life of their employer's wife and daughter in France. The details were gruesome. The victim's eyes were gouged out, and the attacks were so violent that even the police couldn't believe what they were seeing. This wasn't just a simple crime of rage, the sisters worked in tandem, methodically carrying out the crimes in a way that left the nation reeling. What makes the sisters' story so captivating is how it peeled back the veneer of domestic tranquility to expose a deep, dark vein of class tension and psychological turmoil. These sisters weren't just maids, they were symbols of the oppressed working class, pushed to the brink by their subservient roles and eventually breaking in the most dramatic way possible. I'm definitely not victim blaming at all. It just is definitely one of those cases where it's there's just a lot going on. The backstory is pretty wild. Their trial was of course a media sensation, stirring up debates about mental health, workers' rights, and the hidden despair lurking in ordinary lives. In the end, the sisters saga is a macabre tale of what happens when the human mind is pushed too far, wrapped in a mystery that still fascinates and horrifies people to this day. And I'm sure for as long as we remember the story, it will always be absolutely horrifying. Next we are talking about the Briley brothers, Linwood, James, and Anthony, who all turned 1979 Richmond, Virginia into their personal hunting ground in a chilling spree that lasted over seven months. These brothers weren't picky, they engaged in random acts of violence, home invasions, and cold-blooded crimes, racking up at least 11 victims. Their reign of terror included not just killing, but also tormenting their victims and stealing anything that they could get their hands on. Just imagine the fear that gripped Richmond as these brothers moved from one crime to the next, seemingly always one step ahead of the law. The manhunt to catch them was one of Virginia's most intense and nerve wracking with the whole community holding its breath until they were thankfully finally brought to justice. Next we're talking about the bloody benders, who 
were like the horror movie family you hope to never meet. Operating in Kansas during the 1870s, they ran a seemingly innocent inn and general store, but with a very grisly twist. The family, led by the very mysterious John Bender and his equally mysterious kin, had a very chilling side hustle, killing their guests for cash. Travelers would check in and well, they wouldn't really check out. The Benders cleverly positioned their victims at a seat of honor at their dinner table, which was unfortunately placed over a trap door. I just, like, I'm not laughing. That's just crazy that that's real. I feel like that's only in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but nope, very real. After a hearty meal, the guest would be whacked on the head and then dropped into the cellar to meet a very grim fate. This went on until the neighborhood started noticing that people who visited the Benders tended to disappear into thin air. Honest to God, thank you for the nosy neighbor in that situation. All right, sometimes a nosy neighbor can be annoying, but I guess when the benders are in town, we need them. When the suspicions grew too intense, the benders did what any family of criminal masterminds would do. They vanished. By the time the locals pieced everything together and dug up the property, the benders were long gone, leaving behind a legacy that turned their homestead into an infamous chapter of Wild West lore. Yeah, they just vanished. No justice in that story. Next we are talking about Behram and the Thuggy Cult. The story of Behram and the cult are like something straight out of a horror classic, but this nightmare was very real in 19th century India. Behram, who was the cult's most infamous leader, is often called one of history's worst killers. So basically, the whole thing was a secretive gang called the Thuggies, and they roamed the Indian countryside with a very chilling mission. Their MO was to befriend travelers, take their lives with a ceremonial scarf called a rumal, and then rob them blind. They did this all under the guise of worshipping the goddess Kali, believing their crimes were a form of devotion. The leader himself is said to have been directly involved in taking the lives of over 900 people. The British eventually cracked down on this crime group, but the sheer scale of their crimes and the cold-bloodedness of the leaders like Behram still boggle the mind even today. Next we're talking about the Carrington family, also sometimes known as the Fall River Cult. In the late 1970s, the quiet town of Fall River, Massachusetts became the backdrop for a horrifying series of events. Carl Drew and Robin Murphy, two seemingly ordinary individuals, actually led a satanic cult that included members of the Carrington family. This dark and twisted group was involved in the brutal ritualistic killings of three women, shocking everyone with the level of violence and the satanic practices involved. The crimes were not just gruesome, they were carried out with a ceremonial cruelty that suggested that they were more than mere killings. They were actually rituals meant to honor some nefarious unseen force. As the cult continued their sinister activities, the local community lived in fear, and the mysterious aura surrounding the Carrington family grew. Details emerged of rituals, sacrifices, and an unsettling belief in dark powers, painting a picture of a family caught in the grip of something truly evil. This saga of brutality, mysticism, and mayhem left an indelible mark on Fall River, turning the Carrington family into a name synonymous with one of the most disturbing chapters in in the town's history. Next we are talking about the Cray twins, Ronnie and Reggie, and they were not just gangsters, they were celebrities of the criminal underworld in the east end of London during the swinging 50s and 60s. These twins ran their gang called The Firm, with a mix of brutal violence and a surprising dash of charm, pulling off armed robberies, running protection rackets, and setting the occasional building on fire when needed. But the Crays weren't just about the tough stuff. They rubbed elbows with politicians and pop stars, making them the feared yet fascinating faces of London's mob scene. Their story is an absolute wild ride, complete with evil crimes, glamorous parties, and a dramatic downfall that turned them into legends. Everyone knew that crossing the craze was a one-way ticket to trouble, but it is said that their charisma made them oddly magnetic figures in London's tumultuous underbelly. Next we are talking about the bourgeois 
family. This family is like the original Game of Thrones cast, full of plots, poison, and power grabs. During the Renaissance, they were like the Kardashians of their day, but way more dangerous. Rodrigo Bourgeois, who wormed his way into becoming Pope Alexander VI, was the family's superstar. Under his rule, the Vatican was less about piety and more about power plays and partying. His son Caesar was the real life version of Machiavelli's prince, ruthless, cunning, and a master manipulator who inspired fear and respect. And then there's Lucrezia, often painted as the femme fatale of the family, wrapped up in rumors of poison rings and scandalous affairs, but also a savvy political figure in her own right. Together they turned the church and European politics into their personal chess game, leaving a trail of intrigue, mysterious deaths, and whispered secrets that make them one of history's most notorious and fascinating families. And finally, to close out our list today, we are talking about the Sawney Bean family. You would think that a family called the Beans would be like cute and nice and wholesome, like we're the Beans, but no, of course not. It simply just has to be the stuff of nightmares. The chilling saga of the Sawney Bean family is a tale that definitely straddles the murky line between Scottish folklore and nightmarish reality. So let's take it back to the 16th century on the rugged Scottish coastlines where a secretive clan led by the infamous Sawney Bean resides. According to legend, this family wasn't your typical band of misfits, they were human eaters. Hiding out in a secluded coastal cave, the Bean clan supposedly ambushed unsuspecting travelers at night, dragging them back to their grim abode to meet a gruesome end. The stories claim that they took the lives of and feasted on over a thousand people thriving in secrecy for decades. Historians, however, are a little skeptical. I'm not here to lie to you. They poke holes in the tale, questioning its authenticity and suggesting it might be more about sensationalism than historical fact. But whether myth or fact, the story of the Bean family has fascinated and horrified people for generations, making it a perfect blend of horror and historical mystery. So was Sonny Bean a real figure of terror or just a boogeyman born from the depths of folklore? The answer might depend on how dark you like your history served. Mm -hmm.